Okay, now we get into some more formal aspects of this uh, discussion we are having on sustaining the commons. We have looked at social dilemmas, social dilemmas in the lab, in the field, self-governance in the lab, in the field, and we looked at action arenas and action situations where there are rules and we need to here look at how to classify these rules so when you go to actually implementing sustaining the commons in the real world you have a formal description of what the system is because in the next section the last section we will take a systems perspective on trying to put all these together so here uh, we are looking at rules of the game uh, rules of the games as part 4 in that we have two chapters chapter 10 starting with this one on classifying the rules you already know many of the rules and you know whether you play tennis match or you're playing cricket or you're playing uh, or you are in you know in a shop to buy things your job your qualifications to get that job everywhere there are rules that are followed but how do how are they classified what is the formal framework in which the typographies of the rules can be classified this is the idea here it's a bit kind of text a lot of text and a lot of definitions but nonetheless they are useful and we need to go through them so key concepts here we will learn uh, which types of rules can be used to address different elements of that structure, uh, elements that structure action situations. So often you are in an action situation, implicitly you know all the rules, but you haven't given it much thought because just by practice you know what the rules are and you know when somebody breaks those rules as well. Of course, you also many times know the fines associated with breaking the rules and uh, such. Develop an understanding of... Uh, un sorry, I don't know why I'm fumbling the reading. Develop an understanding that policies are always composed of clusters of rules and thus simple one rule policy prescriptions like those we hear from politicians on the campaign trail that typically prove ineffective. Uh, it's tricky for politicians. People don't remember uh, multiple things if you say them as they say. If you said three things, you have said too many things. So you may be saying something like, it's the economy is stupid, which may catch on. Or you may say, read my lips, no new taxes. Or you may say, you know, make America great again, and so on. So obviously, those are not uh, exact an, uh, analogies for what we are talking about but basically says that politicians tend to tell you that there is one rule that's a silver bullet that's going to fix all the problems we are facing at the current time and that person is the one to implement that rule and solve all the problems but that's not how real life works so let's look at classifying the rules let's start with an example as usual uh, an action situation uh, with some rules. Organizing a surprise party. As good as any you can think of, right? A surprise party can be considered an action situation where different participants have different positions, they have different information, and they have different choices to make. When you organize, they can make the choice or they have to make in depending on the situation. When you organize a surprise party there are different rules and norms to take into account. These rules and norms are informal. They are not written down on paper. Nonetheless it's advisable to follow these rules for a successful event where the surprise is real and felt by the person who's the target of this surprise party. Once a date has been set for the guest for the guest of honor uh, is sorry Whew. once the date has been set for which <laughs> you know you have to be very careful how you stress these things right once a date has been set for which the guest of honor is available there I got it an assistant is appointed to create a fake activity so that you bring the guest to the action arena and into the action situation where a surprise will be rendered. Guests are invited and are explicitly told that it's a surprise party, so they have this information. All guests need to arrive about half an hour be uh, before the arrival of the guest of honor and they need to park their cars out of sight. So, you know, kind of details that do matter. 
The informal rules, informal rules define the positions of the participants, so the guest of honor, organizer, assistant, and the guests. The boundary rules when people can participate in the event, such as uh, you have to be invited to be part of this. Define the information one has so that do not share information with the guest of honor is a information that you are given and has to be strictly followed. Define the choices so guest of honor has limited choices has to show up at the action arena at the given time without much information or some fake information about why the guest has to be there at that time. If these rules are followed, the payoff is a successful surprise party and you do these because you love somebody and you want to uh, you know, give them a pleasant surprise they will remain remember for a long time. Hopefully you don't give them a heart attack. <laughs> this example shows that there are different types of rules that define specific aspects of the action situation. In this chapter we'll discuss what kinds of rules relate to the different variables of the action situation. So this gives you some idea of the framework we are going to build here. Uh, in this chapter we'll discuss consistent ways to group the rules. This is important because you will have many action arenas, many common goods that you are trying to sustain and achieve the triumph of the goods and you want to have the framework of institutional analysis and development that we looked at before to be applied and appropriate rules are designed to accomplish an outcome such as sustaining the commons, right? In empirical research many different types of rules are found. Eleanor Ostrom developed a way to classify the rules in order to study and understand institutions. She won the Nobel Prize for some reason, right? The motivation for classifying rules relates to addressing questions such as which rules need to be changed to solve a particular problem or which are the most cost-effective rules to change to achieve a certain outcome. So you have a set of rules being followed and the outcome is not what you had in mind or is not any more desirable. Then you need to think about uh, changing the rules but also being very cost-effective on how these new rules are implemented to change or uh, to achieve the outcome. Right. So cost-benefit analysis is always important. Um, such questions may arise in response to a vast array of problems for global uh, from global challenges that such as such questions may arise in response to a vast array of problems from global challenges such as how to change the incentives facing users of fossil fuels to reduce CO2 emissions so as to reduce the impact of climate change local issues such as how to change the parking regulations on a university campus to increase accessibility and manage the number of cars appropriately without causing traffic jams and so on. The policy analysts need to understand the action situation and the consequences of different interventions on the out outcomes. This understanding is ideally based on experience and a good theoretical framework. Instead of assuming all situations are the same and we just have to apply a blueprint solution, the policy maker needs to understand the local context to identify the appropriate response. The classifications of rules as discussed in this chapter may help the policy analyst to form a proper diagnosis. So remember we said there is no blueprint in the sense even after you set up all the rules uh, you may still need to have intelligent applications of the rules based on specific situations like in a soccer game we discussed before there are many rules but each rule cannot be applied constantly because then the game will just stop. So there are certain uh, you know freedoms given around the rules and the game is stopped when the rule uh, uh, breaking is egregious and has to be punished with a yellow card, red card, whatever. So decision making is not just blindly applying rules as a blueprint but it is using the rules framework to make decisions as to where the rules just cannot be broken and where rules are flexible enough to allow solutions to go forward right this is complicated 
you have, you want to avoid subjectivity but yet uh, you know you have laws and legal systems because laws cannot be blindly applied all the time murder is punishable offense but murder is what when somebody kills someone else and there are various categories of murders premeditated murder one murder two involuntary manslaughter and so on and so forth self-defense so legal system then interprets the laws to meet out the proper justice how to classify rules then in chapter 4 where we looked at social dilemmas we identified the components of action situations that are used to construct a wide variety of analytical models of markets hierarchies firms neighborhood associations common property govern, uh, governance regimes etc and we put those into the context of social dilemmas <coughs> because knowing the rules you still have to make decisions and your decisions may depend on what decisions other may others make or what you think others may do so we talked about prisoner's dilemma where you are having to guess what the other person might do and we try to evolve kind of understanding of what is expected of humans we advanced that into uh, labs and found that people are not just rational egoists that there is much more to human behavior than that and so on the elements are participants positions actions outcomes information uh, information control and costs and benefits which are always something we look out for in setting the rules they are related in the following manner which we have looked at in other situations before so we looked at participants and actions before but here in classifying rules participants and actions are assigned to positions as we did before outcomes are linked to actions and that's how you drive uh, the participants and train them to follow actions information is available about action outcome linkages okay we talked about this before as well control is exercised over action outcome linkages so when you are playing a game as a team member or you are buying and selling things and so on you have control uh, on your actions and actions are driven by outcome expectations and you know that actions and outcomes are linked so you have to use your control to make sure that action outcome linkages are doing what they are expected to do or what you expect them to do costs and benefits are assigned to action outcome linkages as well because whatever the action situation you are participating because you have a cost in participating and you are expecting benefit out of the action outcome linkage right so let's look at an example for example within a sports league participants include players coaches teams etc each of those participants is per permitted to undertake a limited number of actions so you know what your role is and you have information on what your uh, actions are to be and how they are limited and how they are related to the actions of other players on your team and in on the opposing team a coach decides which players will play in the game to start with while the player is making operational decisions allowed by the rules in split second intervals during the game so you are on the field you are put on the field you are a certain position defender offense uh, goalie uh, you know you can imagine many things in cricket you have a wicket keeper a bowler or a batsman a fielder outfielder infielder and so on information available in an action situation is not available for everyone tactics of teams are not publicly shared and a player may not reveal some shin splint problems to his coach or her coach because she wants to play that night so you see the english problem here his coach she wants obviously not correct winning and losing games has major consequences for teams in terms of monetary uh, gains as well as just reputation and expectation of the fan base will they win a key tournament and get promoted to a higher level league so you may have rounds in which you keep advancing based on the wins although teams and team members will benefit from winning the game individual players also want to shine to get more lucrative contract so you are playing for the team to win but you are in 
playing also to make sure everybody notices your contribution and you can get very aggressive <laughs> to make sure that you are noticed or that you get the uh, role to be uh, you know highlighting your specific talent whether it's a scoring a goal or defending a goal and so on and so forth <coughs> There are many details uh, in the text that I'm cutting very short, so you should read. The chapter is very short. You can read it in 30 minutes, but please do, because it's very interesting. Rules of exogenous variables directly affecting the elements of an action situation. This is from Ostrom's work as well. So here we have the situation with uh, boundary rules, position rules, and choice rules as exogenous variables, information rules, aggregation rules as well and you have scope rules on this which determine the potential outcomes and how they must or must not look like or must not must or must not be and you have payoff rules as well where net costs and benefits are assigned so let's start here you have participants and they are assigned to certain positions so you can imagine many situations buyer and seller versus government official versus employer boss and so on and so forth uh, and you have actions assigned to these positions so you have boundary rules which define which participants are allowed in so you know your uh, qualifications uh, to get the job or to play a certain position in the game uh, you know many such boundary rules exist in every situation which allows uh, once you are a participant then you are assigned a position whether you are a blank clerk or a manager uh, cashier and so on position rules are associated with the position you play and there are choice rules which define your actions and they are related to your position as well what you can do as a manager is very different than what a clerk can do for example Lots of noise outside. Again, I have left the door open and the windows open to get cross breeze. Temperatures are very nice for the last few days. Air is clearer, but today it's worse. Okay, So, you have information about which is linked to potential outcomes. So, you have uh, information rules which tell you what information you actually get which re is related to your position but that is linked to the outcome potential outcome as well and there are aggregation rules which control uh, over uh, things that are linked to potential outcomes right not everybody so aggregation rule means uh, every player has a position and a particular set of information and rules to follow but the aggregate outcome is that the team must win score as many goals as possible as quickly as possible prevent the other team from scoring and so on and so forth right so there is a aggregation rule involved as well the potential outcomes again are uh, governed by scope rules and we'll see some examples again in case this is not clear of course potential outcomes uh, are, are driving towards uh, you know benefits in many ways so net costs and benefits are uh, assigned to by payoff rules so you know just look at it again and make sure you understand this is something you do intuitively all the time but you are not paying attention to what the boundary rules are what position rules are what choice rules are and what information you are getting and why you are getting it how it is related to your position and so on and so forth but overall you know what role you are playing in the action situation from morning to evening uh, based on your job and your uh, qualifications that go uh, you know that got you the job and so on we use the action situation to classify uh, so maybe I should stop here because uh, I have gone on talking for almost 20 minutes uh, it's a very short chapter chapter so maybe I'll finish in the next podcast but make sure you follow the uh, classification we are making for the rules in a formal sense even though intuitively you know what they are okay so we'll come back and continue in the uh, next podcast